Brit School's in Selhurst in Croydon in South London. Um, we've been going for about 25 years. I've been there pretty much all of that time. I'm a theatre teacher. Um, and then during that time, I've, I've grown and, and, and now run the place. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And I think where in that school, um, where we've kind of try to create something where young people can express themselves and be a bit like Rebecca, the person they want to be, to be the artist they want to be, and maybe find out what's in that place. So the song that brought us in, Rolling in the Deep, was by one of um, our former students, Adele Atkins. Um, Adele was a cracking kid at school, um, arrogant, lazy, funny, <laughs> talented, chain smoker. Um, but what I really loved about uh, Adele, and I loved watching her in assemblies, and I really enjoyed watching her in concerts at school, and some of 19 was written while she was a student at our place, um, was a conversation we had in the humanities lesson once. Uh, I was covering the lesson, and they were doing the American Civil Rights Movement, and uh, we started talking about the Ku Klux Klan. And we started talking as a class about racism in the Deep South and what an issue that was. And I started talking about the song Strange Fruit that Billie Holiday was known for. And Adele said, uh, oh, I love Billie Holiday. So we began a conversation about the Ku Klux Klan and Billie Holiday and music and the power of music to talk about social issues. And in that moment, I think, encapsulates the need for us. If we want to create talent with young people, we've got to know what they believe in, and we've got to encourage them to believe in something. And when they believe in something, some stuff can happen. So Adele went to a school, the same school that Jessica Cornish, who became Jessie J, went to, Katie O'Brien, who became Katie B. Uh, the Rizzles, Kooks, The Feeling, a whole bunch of bands, um, actors like Kush Jumbo, Ashley Madeque, Ivana Jeremiah from Humans, the new Spider-Man, Tom Holland, graduated a year ago. He's just found out he's Spider-Man. That's crazy, <laughs> right? Um, uh, uh, poets like Kate Tempest, Laura Dockerell, uh, dance students who are now with DV8 or with uh, Matthew Bourne or with Pina Bausch. And increasingly, people in television and film industry as well, people in the media, uh, Gemma Kearney, the Mandem on the Wall boys, they are YouTube superstars, came up with an idea of three lads sitting on a wall chatting about stuff, and now they're making a movie about it. That's something special. So let's try and work out maybe what's going on in that institution that maybe other schools could learn from or society could learn from to make a more creative youth, a youth that kind of can, because they're the people we need, right? They're the people that are going to come up with the ideas that are going to knock the other ideas out of the water. So how are we going to encourage them? So the first thing I think we need to do is to talk about the status of those subjects. So if we think about this modern education system, it's narrow-minded, short-sighted, built on a really strange feeling that mathematics and English are more important than anything else. It's a crazy decision. Okay, that those topics are really more important than in science and history and languages. And right at the bottom is physical education and creative arts and performing arts. They're not as important as those other subjects. I think Judy might have something to say about that. And when we say to people, your subject that you're into, your talent, isn't as important as whether you're a mathematician, we're kind of in trouble. Of course, it's really hard to do algebra, right? Logarithm's difficult. Understanding comprehension, punctuation, that's very hard. But Mozart's really complex. Understanding and having the ability to create a dance piece that's going to change the world and make people cry, that's really hard. That takes a real particular brain and power. And we have to champion those powers. The subject that this, this festival is about, the media, <coughs> your subject is considered soft. It's a soft subject, right? Easy. It's really easy to make TV. Yeah? When you want to make a movie, God, that's, that's really soft. But actually writing about a poem is really hard. It's really soft to understand how ideology is disseminated to us and communicated to us through the radio and television and the internet. That's not soft, that's difficult. So we have to create a society that kind of values all subjects and therefore all talent to be of equal. When people say, that's not rocket science, I want to say, that's not dance. <laughs> you right? Imagine. So we've got an equal status for all subjects. Brilliant, we can make things happen. Then we've got to make access happen. We're lucky, our school is free. No one pays to go there. It's a state school, anyone can come. It doesn't have pushy parents paying for it. Um, anyone can come. I don't think it's really right that it depends how wealthy your family are, whether you start dance at the age of four, because mummy and daddy can pay for your ballet lessons. That doesn't, for me, seem right. It doesn't seem right if you want to be a movie maker and your parents can afford to buy you some great kit, then that can happen for you. But you might have loads of brilliant ideas and your imagination might be fantastic, but because you don't have access to the kind of means of production, that's never going to happen for you. So we have to make the arts free. Just imagine if, like, 1997, when we opened up the museums, imagine if we did that for theatres and for cinemas. 
You can come in for nothing, guys. It's never going to happen, but imagine if it could. At the school, we produce uh, free theatre every year for over 5,000 local primary school children. I believe that they should have access to the arts at an early age. Once we get access to the, them at an early age, then things can happen and creativity and talent can shine. I think that's really important. And if you're running a school or you're running an institution that can access young people into it, do it. Do it and don't charge them. Let them come for free. Find a way of making that happen. The other year I was outside our, our main theatre as a group of 10-year-olds came out and they'd come to see a musical we'd written for 10-year-olds and they were, and I was thinking, did it go well, did it go well? And they were cheering and I was like, oh, it went well, fantastic. And they were singing the songs and moving out. And this little lad, this little 10-year-old boy from South London turns around to his mate and goes, that was the best play I've ever seen. And I was like, fantastic. <laughs> and his mate turned around to him and said, that's the only play you've ever seen. <laughs> and although we laugh, I'm sobered by that. How did he get to be 10 and never go to the theatre? Because the school didn't take him, didn't think it was important, because his parents couldn't afford it, because the West End is too pricey. How did that happen? And it shouldn't. So we've got to make the theatre free. We've got to make the arts as free as possible for access to happen. And so once we've got those people inspired, then what are we going to do to make that happen? We are going to say to them, we're going to trust you and we're going to give you freedom. So two things happen in our school that don't happen in our school happen in other schools. We don't have school uniform because it's not interesting. Because it, break, it, make, it creates conflict and it stops you being the individual. When you're 14, you want to be an individual. And school says to me, no, you can't be an individual while you're here, only outside. So when's your creativity going to shine in school when you're being told what to wear? We don't have bells at school because people can read the time. They can get back from lunch because they know what time it is. Yeah, imagine in the Victorian society, we had a big um, you know, foghorn to start the working day. Get to work. So in work, you're a worker. And when you're outside work, you're a human. Same at school. School bell goes, I'm now, I'm now a, a school student. Outside of it, I'm a human. That should not happen. You should be able to express yourself and create your own talent from breaking down those boundaries. And once you're inside, you should be given trust. Trust to kind of express yourself and to be the person you want to be. So we do have an LGBT society at our school, a feminist society, and more increasingly, children talking about mental health issues because that's something that they believe in. We also believe giving students the chance to kind of risk and to make um, significant mistakes. Yeah? I know in TV land you can't do that anymore, right? Can you? In our school, we can and we should, and the school should encourage risk and failure as often as possible, because it's only then, as talented artists, we know how to move on. So if you're a music student in our school, you have to book the venue, get the technicians, hire the van, sell the show, work out your set list, get the technician on board, all yourselves at the age of 17. We had two shows come to Edinburgh this year, one of them from students who were 16 years of age who organised it all themselves. Didn't need mummy or daddy, didn't need an executive. They did it themselves because they had the confidence to go out and make their own theatre. And what do they make theatre about? They need to make theatre, this is my final point really, about what they believe in. If we're going to have the artists of tomorrow, today, we need to say, what do you believe in? Yeah? So how do we do that? One thing we do at schools, we have a protest day, um, which I love because it really sends nerves through everyone, where young people decide, what do they care about? And they create a theatrical response to it. What political issues matter to them? And they're going to create a piece of theatre. So we've had pieces of theatre which asked for the end of the monarchy. Pieces of theatre that have said, OK, um, we need to talk about body image. We need to talk about animal rights. We need to talk about racism. We need to write songs about political stories that we care about. And we would never censor it. Why would schools censor what young people want to talk about? Because artists, they've got to work out what they want to say. And what they've got to talk, they don't want to be reflective all the time. And I know, of course, Adele's famous for writing songs about how she's feeling. But they also need to talk about the world. And when we talk about the world, we understand the world as artists. And therefore, we get the confidence to find our own voice to be the brave, original artists that this society needs. And to close with another example is that every Brit school student has to do at least one or two community projects a year um, where they use their talent to work with a community group. So they might work, we do a dance project with a disability school, we might do a project, a storytelling project with an Alzheimer's society. We've been working with young victims of rape in the local area recently and creating a piece of theatre so that young women don't put themselves in those vulnerable positions again. And we're doing a project at the moment, over the last 10 years in fact, uh, which I think is a great example of how we should encourage young people to use their talent to, get, to create empathy, create emotion and to make extraordinary things happen. And this is at a local hospice, and this is what we do. So people in the last three months of their lives with a terminal illness work with our students to create artwork that reflects their own life. 
So someone who's got cancer and is right near the end might want to talk to someone about, I want to leave this behind as a piece of dance, and a dancer will create a dance piece for them. Or they might want to write a story about their lives and we turn it into a monologue. Um, or they might want to write a song or record all their favourite songs in our radio station and be the DJ for the day. So we take the wheelchair up there with their oxygen and they'll record their kind of the stories that they want to believe in. And recently we've been working with an artist called Loyal Kana. Well, you'll know, you might not know him yet, but you will soon. Uh, he's a new rap artist called Ben Loyal Kana. And Ben had tragedy in his life two years ago, or three years ago, his grandfather died. And he turned around to me and said, Sir, do you mind if I, um, I want to be on the hospice project? And I said, no, you're too close to it, Ben. He said, no, no, let me, give me a chance. Um, I want to use my talent, I want to understand my grandfather's death by going to the hospice. And when he was there, he met a man called Martin. Martin was very ill. He had MND and he was really angry. So he had motor neurone disease and he was furious. And he was also furious that some bloody performing arts students had turned up at the hospice. And he was like, you know, well, I don't want to talk to you lot for I'm dying and I'm angry about dying. And Ben said, that's cool, my granddad was too. Should we talk about it? And together, this 17-year-old boy from South London and this man who was slowly fading wrote a piece of spoken word about the anger of dying. Ben helped him write it, helped him record it, and it became a piece to campaign about how we should talk about death and dying, because we have to. And it was a 17-year-old boy. Uh, ben has ADHD, by the way, so therefore in other schools he would have struggled. His new EP came out on Monday. That's a plug for him. He's a great artist, Laura Kana. Um, and there he was, being brave, using his talent, and trying to make something happen with his heart and his kind of skill at the same time. I think that's very powerful. How you could be part of this, if you wish to be, is you want to come down to the school at any time. You're welcome. Everyone's welcome. It's a school that everyone can come to and be part of. Um, ITV have recently given our students two work placements for children who maybe haven't got an opportunity in life. And thank you to ITV for doing that. It's really important that they're part of that. Because schools need you, actually. You need them, because you need new ideas, right? You need new program makers, new editors. But they need you. And that sort of working together, I think, could make some extraordinary things happen. Thanks so much. Cool.